Hello everyone and welcome to Depression to Expression. My name is Scott, as you know, and we have a guest on the channel, Michaela Peterson. This has been a collaboration I've wanted to do for a long time. Here's a little clip to show you. She was on the uh, TVO uh, network, The Agenda, with Steve Pakin. Here's a little video right there. Uh, there she's with her dad, um, Jordan Peterson, and they were on that a few times and I, and I watched that years ago. And then recently came upon it and I said, oh my gosh, she was on there, what was it, 2016? 2016, yeah. 2016, um, talking about the new diet she's now on, um, treating her autoimmune disorder and depression, and this is obviously a mental health channel, so I thought she could come on and talk about her new diet and how, uh, how it's really treating her mental health in a positive way, and the autoimmune disorder. Did I get that right? Were those yep. the two big things? Those, yeah, those, those are the, are two, the big two big things. Those are the two big things. Okay, so Michaela, thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for having me. This for is sure. exciting. Um, okay, so I guess starting from the beginning, uh, what's what's your history with, with mental illness, with depression, um, and what was the, the treatment that really helped so much, without going into too much detail, because we'll talk about the diet uh, later, but what's the history there? So, um, I was formally diagnosed with depression summer of grade five. So that makes me, I think 11 or 12 mm -hmm. and I was not having, I just wasn't happy. I was very unhappy and I guess mostly angry and I was having nightmares and I was having some like obsessive compulsive stuff going on. So, you know reorganizing all your books in your bookshelf from like A to Z and then by author and then by like type of book and like late at night as a kid and that I did did for no reason so that kind of stuff and it was not a good time and dad recognized it as depression because he has it and it kind of it runs in our family so my grandpa has it and my great grandpa had it and it's this like horrible severe depression and he looked at me and thought okay she probably has it so we went to a psychiatrist and they gave me antidepressants. So I was on, I think I started with Prozac, but switched over to Celexa fairly quickly. And that actually helped like a, a huge amount as a kid. I can remember starting them and then just relaxing as if I'd been like holding myself in like a rigid position for a really long time. So that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I took those until I was 23. And unfortunately, like, they helped a lot, but the depression was still there. So it, obviously it's not a cure. So it, it got worse uh, as a teenager. So when I was 14, I, for whatever reason, I had this, you know, dip and my mood took a turn for the worse. Mm -hmm. so then I upped the antidepressants. And then when I was, you know, 18 or 19, it happened again and I upped the antidepressants. And then by the time I was like 20... 20, yeah, um, I moved away, went to university, and whatever the anti, the antidepressants were doing something, but the depression was so horrible that it just wasn't enough. So I tried um, switching antidepressants, I tried adding on, on another one, and it just wasn't, you know, compared to not being on antidepressants, it was better, but mm -hmm. it was horrible. Right, right. So that's kind of the background with the experiences with depression and then I had like a plethora of other health problems which I'm sure like many people with depression do and it was like autoimmune problems so I had <clears throat> or severe arthritis enough that my hip and ankle were replaced when I was 17 so like bad times and then chronic fatigue that, that hit when I was 14 so the same time when my depression got worse um, I got really tired and like tired passing out like not passing out but falling asleep in class like uh, at around 11 and then napping in the afternoon and I was just napping all the time and that just got worse and worse and worse and I had skin issues and then when I went away to university I gained weight and it wasn't like the freshman 15 that everyone gains it was like <laughs> yeah. the freshman like 35 <laughs> in a really short amount of time okay and so that's also when I was going to the gym more because I was like Got to counteract this somehow. I'll just yeah. work out more, which did not help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I started looking into food. So yeah, that's a long list of and so autoimmune disorder. What does that really involve um, as far as symptoms? 
Um, so, like, the main symptom for the autoimmune disorder I had, so I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and then okay. that diagnosis changed to idiopathic arthritis, so it was just arthritis, basically. And so that was joint pain, joint swelling, and joint deterioration. So that was the main symptom for that autoimmune disorder. And then people with autoimmune disorders also generally have a whole bunch of other symptoms that are like minor in comparison. So fatigue is a really common one. Um, Having rashes, mouth ulcers, like those kind of things are commonly associated with autoimmune disorders as well. And mood, obviously, like that hits a lot of people with autoimmune disorders too. Right. So you're 23 years old. Or not now, but you were 23 years old when you stopped the antidepressants or when you started to look into diet more? Oh, yeah. I definitely did not stop the antidepressants before figuring out the diet. Yeah, for sure. Because they were like, I couldn't get off of those things. I tried, I was getting side effects, um, so I tried tapering them down and it was just so awful tapering them. Like, the depression would come in stronger. So I was like, I'm I'm on these forever. I'm never going to stop taking them. Um, I actually started looking into diet because I was starting to get really bad skin problems. So I was getting rashes, I was getting acne, and then one winter, um, I got something, like my skin stopped healing properly. So I had Mm. these like, this is just horrible. It was horrible. I had these sores like here, here, just around that wouldn't heal. And I went to see some like doctors and dermatologists and they basically said well it's not bacterial we don't know what's going on and i was like holy shit like this is really (laughs) bad not only is it on my face and everyone can see but this is not a good thing and then it's slowly like this was at christmas and Uh then my birthday came around so that's january 4th and it slowly healed and i was like okay whew, don't know what that was about but whatever so then i started i'd been looking into it before trying to figure out my weird skin problems because I'd also had this thing show up where I got little tiny blisters on my fingers and I had one person tell me I was a hypochondriac I was like obsessively googling these blisters I was getting so okay. I said oh stop being like such a hypochondriac and I was like I physically have blisters <laughs> this is not hypochondria so anyway I started looking into rashes and whatever and I found finally found this weird rash I was getting and it was associated with celiac disease and it took a lot of googling to find the right rash and i went through a lot of horrible google pictures <laughs> i finally yeah. found this celiac rash so that's okay. celiac disease the autoimmune disorder where you can't eat gluten right um and causes gut damage and anyway i did my 23 and me and it turns out i have the celiac gene so it was possible i never actually did the biopsy that confirms it because i don't want to do that and right. there's a very high false negative and for right. the the viewers, uh, 23 and Me is is what? Hmm. 23 and Me is just a genetic testing you can do. So you basically spit into a vial and send it off and they decode part of your genome and show you some of your genes and is that, give you kind of an overview. Right. And can, is that like uh, more for health reasons rather than ancestry? They do more, both. They do both. Yeah. Okay. They get into the ancestry part, which is really interesting. Cool. Did you find out anything uh, with Shocking? that? Shocking? Yeah. Oh, we totally did, <laughs> actually. You a quarter Jamaican or? <laughs> not, no, I'm not. <laughs> that would have been more interesting. But so, um, what we did figure out was we thought part of my family, my grandpa, so my dad's dad, um, his parents were Norwegian. But it turns out he's ha- like half Scottish. So his dad actually wasn't Norwegian. He was Scottish. So that was, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So that, that we did figure out some interesting ancestry stuff. Yeah. But um, I did see the, the gene for the celiac. And so I cut out gluten. That was May 2015. Because I was like, okay, well, what if I don't have, like, what if the arthritis is a celiac, the celiac disease? Because um, autoimmune diseases can, like, they can clump up. People can have multiple autoimmune disorders. Right. It was like maybe the arthritis with celiac disease. So I cut out gluten and it didn't do that much. Like my skin issues probably calmed down by 15%, but hmm. uh, it didn't really solve very many of my problems. So then in September, um, mom, my mom brought me to a naturopath and she'd been trying to bring me to naturopaths for like decades and I'd been 
Like, no, they're just taking advantage of sick people and taking their money and giving them false hope. Right, That was right, my okay. opinion of naturopaths. Right. I went to a naturopath and they said, well, try an elimination diet. And they give me this list of foods and I kind of looked at the list of foods and didn't really make any sense. I didn't know anything about diet at all. Mm-hmm. I just like, you couldn't eat oranges, but you could eat lemons. I didn't really understand that. And there were just a whole bunch of things I didn't get. So I tried it for about a week and then was like, it's not doing anything. Um, and I made myself gluten-free, like sugar-free, banana, almond flour muffins. Yeah. And I had a couple that night. And I woke up in the morning, my wrists were really stiff. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, maybe it does have something to do with the arthritis, right? right. But then I had a couple more of the muffins because the muffins were really good. My wrists were that stiff. And then two days later, I couldn't walk. My knees were in such bad shape that I couldn't walk. And I was in the grocery store and, store and my knees locked up and I was like, whoa. So then I cut out like everything I could cut out. Um, and I went down to chicken and actually well, I was not as restrictive as I am now, but okay. I was eating rice, chicken, beef, fish, root vegetables, but not potatoes and green vegetables. So okay. I, I cut out a lot, like I, no dairy, no gluten pretty much no grain except for rice. Um, I was still eating eggs at that point. Okay. And this was while you were still on uh, Celexa. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. trying this, this so, out. And, yeah. Right. I had stopped. So before I, before I realized the gluten thing, I had stopped taking my arthritis medication because uh, I wanted to monitor my flare-ups. Got it. Um, going gluten-free. So I wasn't taking my arthritis medication. So I was immune suppressants, but I was still taking Adderall... Tylenol free for the arthritis pain, um, birth control. I was on antibiotics for my skin, and then antidepressants. I was still on a whole bunch of medication at yeah. this time. Um, I also didn't think that the diet had anything to do with depression. I thought maybe I could use it to fix my skin and the arthritis. Right, but depression. Right. It didn't even occur to me that that could be a diet related thing. Yeah. So I went on that and most of my problems got, you know, 95% better within a month. And it was like my skin was finally clear. My arthritis wasn't there. And this was like a month after eating just fairly restrictive, but not like now. And And that was the, sorry, that was the elimination diet that the naturopath recommended? No, that was a stricter one. Okay. the The one they recommended, I tried for a week and then didn't think it was working and then when I realized there was something to do with food there, I kind of made up my own and cut out some of the foods they had included. Got it. That I didn't really understand why they had included. Like, I cut out all the fruit. Okay. Um, I'd heard from somebody that... Uh, well, we'd known, we, we've known since grade two that oranges gave me flare-ups, but we just left it at that. And we're like, that's weird. Yeah. We just won't look further into that. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, so I cut out all the fruit. Anyway, after like a painful trial and error of trying to reintroduce things and getting these flare-ups and having my skin break out and getting like itchy and arthritic um, in December, so that was in September when I started it, in Mm -hmm. December or like late November, I started feeling like my mood was better and that never happened in the wintertime. It always got worse. My mood started getting better and it got better and better and better. And I was like, you know, okay, this is, this is good. And so I tapered down the antidepressants, which I'd never been able to do. And I went off of them completely. And it was like the best I've ever felt. And so I told dad, because he has the same depression. And I was like, like, holy shit. What if this is diet? Like you have to, you have to try something too. Yeah. So that was December. I was off my antidepressants, told him to go on it. He went on it. And then I reintroduced soy because soy was like one of my favorite foods. And I put soy sauce on everything. Yeah. And I had the worst depressive episode I've ever experienced. Like for like a three week period, it came back. And it didn't, it wasn't just like, it wasn't just mood. I ate a whole bunch of the, I I like made my own miso soup so that it was gluten free and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I ate a whole bunch of that and tofu and edamame beans, like soy in every form. And then I got a huge stomach ache. I spent like the next hour in the bathroom and was like, okay, so my body doesn't like soy. Fair enough. 
And then four hours later, I got itchy everywhere. So like, like a allergic reaction, to itchy. Um, and I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then the next morning I woke up and it was like, I could feel the depression coming back where it was just like a cloud of doom came in. And I like stood in the shower and cried and was like, okay, this whole food thing was just me being hopeful. Like, mm. obviously it's nothing. And then it just got worse and worse and worse for like the next week. And it was just horrible. But like part of me, the logical part of me was like, well, the arthritis did lift. It's never lifted in my entire life. Like, and then for absolutely no reason, other than the fact that I ate all this soy, it's back like hell the next day. I was like, this, this is probably food, but it was really hard to convince myself that that was true. Anyway, for the next year, I basically went up and down, um, trying to reintroduce foods, having these horrible reactions you know, getting better, trying to reintroduce another food, horrible reaction, getting better. Um, yeah. So that's been my experience with food. Okay. Uh, is it on? Yep. Is it working? Oh, yeah. Thank God. <laughs> Let me do everything. Come back Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 2016, yeah. So I'd done the previous TVO thing where I'd gone on and said, you know, antidepressants were a godsend, which they were. Right. Um, and then I went and then it was like, holy shit, maybe diet has something to do with it. So I went back on and that was February and that was when I tried to reintroduce whey. So I was doing way better then than I had been in the previous video, but I was still not doing particularly well because I was in one of these stupid reactions. Right. Um... So that was, yeah, 2016. And then I spent most of 2016 trying to reintroduce other foods because, like, you miss eating foods. So, you know, I tried to reintroduce all my favorite foods. Like, soy was first. Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> um, cheese. And then I tried just whey protein because I was like, that would be easy in the morning and then I don't have to cook all the time because I was just cooking all the time. Right. And I was used to eating out all the time. So that was 2016, and then... So, sorry, with the experimentation, uh, say you introduce cheese, how do you know that it's... It, how, how long of a time period before you're like, nope, can't, it, can't eat cheese because my, you know, depression came back or my arthritis is back? Is that within the 24 hours that you know, or...? It depends. So um, if you know within 24 hours, it's going to be a nasty reaction. So like the soy, I knew then like I knew that night that was bad. Um, cheese, yeah, cheese. I well, after not eating dairy for a month, I lost my lactose tolerance. So I got this huge stomach ache. Felt like I was gonna die. And then this was I tried to reintroduce cheese when I was still on antidepressants. So in like October, it was one of the first ones. And I spent I was like crying the next day, which now I realized was because my depression worsened. But I I thought it was just because. I realized I couldn't eat cheese and I was really upset about not being able to eat cheese because cheese is yummy. <laughs> That's what I thought at the time, but right. now I know it's because the depression worsened. Um, but it depends. Uh, if I ate a whole huge quantity of something, which is what I was doing at the beginning, because I was like, hey, if I can't eat this, might as well go out with a bang, then I was getting reactions, yeah, the next day. Okay. But then I started getting, you know, testing smaller and smaller amounts because I realized I, how sensitive I was. And sometimes it could take up to four days. So that complicates things a lot, which is why I had to space out the reintroduction so far. Because it was like, I'd eat something, I'd feel okay, and then the next day I'd feel a little worse. But not enough to be noticeable, and it wouldn't really hit until day four. Okay, got it. So it made it complicated, mm -hmm. and complicated to explain, because it sounded like some sort of conspiracy theory. Um, yeah, and then the arthritis sometimes would take up to a week. Okay. Yeah. So when I so tried, you had to yeah. keep a, a I had a journal. It was all journaled. Yeah, because if you have the flare up four days later, okay, what did I eat four days yeah. before? Type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and oh, okay. it wasn't just that. It was when the depression came back. So did all the doubts about whether this was a real thing. So every time I'd have a reaction, I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm just following some weird conspiracy, and this has nothing to do with anything. But then it was always the same period of time, and it would lift again. Hmm. So, and it was a long time like these were three week reactions that the depression would come back and then it would go away again and then it wouldn't come back until I reintroduced something so I could see the pattern but it was just so hard to believe that it was good I kept a journal right right and geez three weeks of that too yeah it was, of, rough. It was rough 
Yeah. But it wasn't as rough as thinking that I was stuck with that forever. Okay. Like there was still, you know, I would count down like the days and then I, you know, it would get better. Yeah. So it, and I was less tired, like my fatigue had gone away. So that was a huge thing. And my skin was better than it had been. So there were benefits. Um, mm-hmm. And the depression was going like this instead of just solidly. So. Right. But if we if we rewind a bit, because that's a lot of work. Yeah. That is a lot of work. And um, was the first motive for you to do this, was that because of the skin part when you first looked into this, right? Yeah. But then just minor improvements kept you going and experimenting throughout the next, you know, year and a bit? Well. Because that's so much... I'm saying it's incredible. It's so much effort, though. Like, what kept you wanting to do more research and keep this it journal was honestly and introduce skin. food? It was so skin. It was, like, purely looks-based. Yeah. It was like, I was like, I can, you know, maybe I can handle severe depression and a whole <laughs> bunch of medication, and maybe I can handle an autoimmune disorder, but freaking my skin, too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't no. do those three things. Oh, yeah, and the chronic fatigue. Like, I can handle, I can't do four. Yeah. I can do three things. I can't handle four. Right. It's like, I can't do it. It's too much. I have to fix the skin thing or like it was just emotionally and physically it was too much for me to handle. Okay. It's like I have to fix one of these. Yeah. So that started me going. But then when I realized maybe the celiac disease, maybe that was causing the arthritis. I mean, obviously you want to get rid of the arthritis yeah. too. Yeah. So. That's just, that was like a huge bonus on top of the improved skin then. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, let's follow this trail and see how far yeah. it goes. And it didn't, I mean, I didn't even expect the depression to have anything to do with it just randomly happened November. So yeah. So it was almost like seven months after I stopped eating gluten. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of battery. I fully charged that baby. Um, I hope that didn't. If that cut out, I'm sorry. <laughs> In regards to the, the diet that you're on now, I don't even know, do you even call it a diet anymore? It's really just a lifestyle of so, so what, you're not up to date in this. What's the secret? I'm not um, up to date in this. I'm actually only eating meat. Yeah. That's kind of the face I was expecting. Hold um, on. <laughs> hold on. So, so I'll explain a little bit behind that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So That's awesome. I had this original elimination diet, and it was pretty much greens, sweet potatoes, apples, pears, and meat. And coconut oil, like apple cider vinegar. It was very limited, but it was still like, well, very well-rounded compared to just eating meat. And I was doing really well on that. And then I got pregnant and something changed and it stopped working as well. So I was still doing better than I was pre-diet, but I wasn't at that like my depression is gone like it was. Um, And it took me almost a year to figure out what was going on because that diet had been working. Um, and then, you know, step away from that for a bit. So I had put dad on this diet, which was the same, you know, sweet potatoes, greens, meat. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and he lost a whole bunch of weight. He lost like 50 pounds in the first year and he'd been trying to lose weight for a while. Okay. Healthy 50 pounds. I mean, I I have people being like, that's not healthy, but yeah, he's back. He's like at a normal weight now. Exactly. Uh, but it was just fast and it was I guess it was kind of scary for us too because it was fast. Um, so he lost a whole bunch of weight. He stopped napping. Um, he had some psoriasis that cleared up. And his, I would say his depression lessened, but it didn't go away. And the anxiety didn't go away fully. Okay. And it, for some reason, it just didn't go away fully for him. It helped, but not like it helped my mood. So anyway, we'll leave that be. So then this diet stopped working for me. Mm -hmm. And I started cutting out more and more and more things. And I was eating more and more meat. Because I knew... I don't know how I knew. It's like, I can't be allergic to chicken. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, So then in, like, frustration in December, I Googled, like, allergic to everything. Which is something I'd Googled (laughs) multiple times before. Uh And I came across this lady who had been diagnosed with Lyme disease, like, 20 years ago. And the only thing she was eating was meat. And she could control her Lyme disease by only eating meat. And the reason I hadn't tried that before was because I thought I was going to die of scurvy like in the first month. Right. So I just, I didn't try it. But um, I saw that she had only been eating meat for like 18 years and she was fine. Yeah, 18 years. 
Um, and then I thought, okay, screw it. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I just got a taste of what not having depression was like. I'm not going back into it. Right. If I hadn't had the taste, I, it would have been okay, I guess. But, like, I knew what that was like, so I needed to... Anyway, I so I stopped eating everything other than meat December. December. Okay. Yeah. 2016 December. No. Or, sorry, 2017. 2017, sorry. 2017 December. Okay, so this is fairly fairly, fairly fresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, when you say only eating meat... I mean, water, sparkling water, salt. Okay, I yeah. I still eat salt. Yeah. Um, and beef. I'm and eating beef. beef. I was eating chicken before. I'm not anymore. And fish? No. No fish. Just beef. I think beef, beef makes me feel the best. Okay. I know how strange it sounds, but it's working. There's, there's a lot of good stuff in beef. Apparently. That, that's a very scientific answer. There's a lot of good stuff in beef. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff okay, in beef. Okay, but that you've gone through that experimentation of, of fish, and then you did chicken and, yeah. and pork. No, um, so I always stayed away from pork. I stopped eating pork in high school because I felt bad about the pigs. Pigs, yeah. So I stopped eating pork in high school. Okay. Um, and then Dad did some food sensitivity tests, and pork showed up high on his so I was also a little, it didn't show up high on mine, but I also hadn't really been eating it. Mm -hmm. So I was a little weary of pork anyway. So I just didn't, didn't bother with pork. Okay. Yeah. So strictly beef. Strictly beef. Now, um, please check out Michaela's Instagram. Great stories if you're looking for some sweet beef recipes. Um, but so on a breakfast, do you do three meals a day? Eat three meals a day? Okay. So I'm looking at your Instagram and you're cooking up a steak for breakfast so what what does your what what kind of does your daily intake of meat look like so i ribeye is what i like generally like the best which i'm pretty sure most people like the best mm -hmm. so uh and it's really fast in the morning so i'll fry one of those in the morning um and then i could just eat ribeye all the time but it's expensive so we have ribs uh, hamburger, roasts, and then I make jerky on Saturdays so that I have, like, something easy to grab. Right. All the time, yeah. And, um, as far as, like, hunger and cravings of other foods... Nothing. 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 I show you some sour keys I have here. You don't want sour keys. Sour patch? Like... I always really liked Sour Patch, but no. So I had <laughs> cravings on the first elimination diet I did. Yeah. I, the cravings were way less than what I used to just get normally. Like before any diets, I was hungry all the time. Even if I had just eaten, like I was hungry all the time. So I used to have cravings all the time then. Mm. So even with the first elimination diet, my cravings went down, but they never went away. I'd say with all meat, they're virtually gone unless I go out and have a couple of drinks. That's like, that's the cheating thing I'll that's, do sometimes. That's the human get, condition right there. Oh, yeah. And then I'll get cravings the next day. Oh, the next day? Not while yeah. you're drunk? Or... No, and I mean, the consequences to cheating are so high for me that I don't, like, there isn't an option. Right. Like, I'm, Cost not, I'm not spending a month arthritic and depressed. For one, in, like, for one Twinkie. No, yeah. thank you. For one Twinkie. Yeah. Not, not no, worth it. No. Not worth it. No. Okay, so that is the diet. That is simple, um, time consuming though, or no? Not at all. Not compared to cooking like yeah. before. I mean, even so a steak that's like 15 minutes, right? right? Frying it on the barbecue. It's even easier. Oh, I don't have a barbecue right now. Ribs. I don't put anything on them. You just put them in the oven then you take them out. Like it's way easier than even just eliminating the salad that I had been eating Saved a little bunch of time because I don't have to chop anything. It's yeah. really easy. Okay, so there's definitely other people in the world that do this. Yeah, so this is the other interesting thing. Okay, well, first I'll tell you, um, my mom went on it right away because she has arthritic knees. And it's not like an autoimmune disorder like what I had, but osteoarthritis in her knees and her hands. And she hadn't been able, like, she'd been on the diet I had put forth, the first elimination diet, and it hadn't eliminated symptoms mm -hmm. um so she went on all meat a couple weeks after i did and her arthritis cleared up she went skiing in march and she hasn't skied in like seven or eight years she's going hiking in croatia next week yeah so her wow so her arthritis cleared up and then 
last week, no, 10 or 11 days ago, I put dad on the diet because the elimination diet just hadn't been. He was down. He would cut out the sweet potatoes because we realized they were, for whatever reason, maybe too much sugar or something. They were making the depression worse. So he was eating meat and salad. And I said, you know, honestly, it's not like we're eating foods that are super I mean, meat's fun to eat. Everything's fun to eat. But it's yeah. not like we're eating, you know, pizza or something that you're cutting out. What's the difference between eating meat, eating meat and salad and just eating meat? And there is a difference, but I was like, just give it a try. Maybe it'll clear up the last of your anxiety because he was having horrible anxiety in the mornings and just in general, and he's fairly volatile. Mm-hmm. And so he went on it, and he feels significantly better, and it only took him a couple of days to start feeling better. And he started that 11 days, you said 11, 10, 11 11, days ago. And from, you know, a few days he felt better and now he's getting better and better. Better and better. Yeah, yesterday, um, And just beef, sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's eating chicken and fish and beef. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, and, but no veggies or anything else? No veggies. So just the meat part, but the fish and, okay. And he feels better. And he's going like, can this really have been the vegetables? Like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, what? but yeah, he's feeling better. And it didn't take him long. But I think the reason it didn't take him long was because he was so close to that already. Mm, he was just eating That's salads. right. But what yeah. What the heck? What are, we, what are we giving? We're giving science the middle finger here. No. What happened to leafy greens? What happened to omega-3? Your, your body and brain especially needing those omega-3s. Or does beef? I don't... Does beef... I thought that was mostly fish and nuts and everything like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, That's like I got desperate, right? Because I was like, I seem to be reacting to the the salad. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do I do if I react to salad and I don't react to beef? Am I just going to eat beef if I die? Like, or am I going to die? Like, what if, what if I'm just doomed to react to the foods I'm eating? But it turns yeah. out you can just cut it out. But there's whole like groups of people, like thousands of people doing this. It's called zero carb. Mm, yes. Uh, yeah, and there are tons and tons of people, and obviously it's all, it's mostly anecdotal, mm. but with really good results, especially for people who are really sick, like shocking results. Yeah. So I'm getting some flack online for telling people, maybe you could try it for a bit and see how you feel, and then you can try to reintroduce other foods and see yeah. how they make you feel, but at least you're at like a baseline. Absolutely. I'm getting some flack for telling people that, but... I was in really, really horrible shape. Like, I had, like, you know, multiple surgeries, and the depression was just... I wasn't going to make it for very much longer. Yeah, yeah. How can anyone argue with your testimony, you know, and your own experience and the results? You can't argue with that. Yeah. So I think it's um, pretty awesome of you to to share this and and create the blog and, and show everyone what you've done. Do you have, in, so you just moved into your uh, new condo. Do you have like a shrine, a cow shrine? <laughs> I really because should. Because cows, that's like, thank your Thank God for cows. Thank God for no, cows. Um, but not the milk. The milk, no. that's probably bad. No, Even I have anyone, a horrible reaction to, to oh, dairy. Oh yeah, to, it's dairy and gluten are, those are big uh, yeah. inflammatory yeah. Um, Those ingredients. were the worst, worst. Well, soy was really bad for and me, soy, soy too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. On my blog, I recommend, like, the least you can do for your health is get rid of the gluten and the dairy. And then, you know, if you're not even sure about it, get rid of it for a month, reintroduce it back in, see how you feel. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, those are the two bad ones. So I'm definitely... A lot of people on this zero-carb diet eat just animal products, so they'll eat a dairy, um, yeah, dairy and meat. And that would definitely not work for me. Right. Okay. But they won't do pasta, no, cookies, no. crackers, sugar, all of that, all of that stuff. Okay. Mm. Uh, this could be a simple answer, but since you're doing, you know, this beef only diet and you've completely, oh, sorry. So let's go over this first. You've completely come off of all medications. Oh or... yeah. Oh, I haven't been, I haven't been taking medications for quite a while. Like, um, so a year, a year and a half is the last, oh no, that's not true. About a year ago, I started getting seasonal allergies. I'm still allergic to everything. 
Like right. the the meat diet hasn't cured my allergies. I'm st- I still experience them. So during the pregnancy, I had just terrible seasonal allergies, and I tried to take antihistamines. Turns out antihistamines have lactose in them, and I. <sighs> So then they made me depressed. And oh I was my like, God. So now I'm allergic to the outdoors, and, and I was really <laughs> allergic, and I can't take these stupid antihistamines. Um, so that was the last time I took something. So that was a year ago. But, okay. But I mean, actual like prescription medication, it's been it's been quite a while. So yeah, I'm not. I haven't been taking anything. And so that's no medication for arthritis, yeah. uh, no antidepressants. Depression, uh, yeah, yeah, antidepressants. And so with... No Adderall. I'd been taking so much Adderall to stay awake. Oh, to stay awake. Yeah, it wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't for, for focus. No, focus. it was for hypersomnia. Okay. There's that new documentary on Netflix called Take Your Pills, and it's all about Adderall and college students in the oh, US. Yeah. I had no idea it was such a big thing. Oh, really? Not for people like who actually need it for ADHD or ADD, but like just to study. Everyone's taking this stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, it... it it's really effective. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I was taking it to stay awake, but man, can you focus? But it, it's focused to like a obsessive level. Okay. Like, it's also very useful if you need to clean everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, I was just so surprised how many students. Yeah, lots and... of people. When I went to Concordia, lots of people were taking it to write essays and things. Right. Right. So back to the diet, though. Um, does does knowing that diet in your case and and many others as helped your depression so much and those everything you've experienced um mood wise does that make you almost not anti-pharma but question that whole uh business of of antidepressants no uh no the antidepressants first of all if you tell anyone that their depression is going to go away if they only eat meat they're just that's the end of the conversation right no one is going to you're just going to get laughed out of the room. It's like take the most ridiculous diet you can and say that's how to get rid of your depression. It's really unfortunate because it really works for me. It works for my dad. It works for my husband. He's doing it. Okay. He had severe depression. Okay. There's thousands of people, and they're anecdotal, obviously, but it's working for them, but it's ridiculous sounding. So am I anti-pharma? Like, no, because antidepressants helped me. Uh, I am a little pissed off that... When you go to medical school, they don't teach you anything about nutrition. Or they tell you, you know, eat your whole grains. Yeah. And, like, make sure you drink enough milk so your bones stay healthy. Like, that was a horrible trigger for the arthritis. Right. That wasn't useful. And I used to just drink. I I drank so much milk. I ate so much dairy. It was horrible. <laughs> that, so, it's, it's still um, the... the f- um, so, on... We're almost out of battery. I hope we don't get cut off. On Michaela's blog, it's like the food pyramid's a lie. Yeah. Um, are, are kids still taught that food pyramid of whole yeah. grains at the bottom yeah, and yeah. dairy? Yeah, yeah. dairy, yeah. But, well, that's a, whole, that's a whole Canadian dairy industry thing to, yeah. to say so, that you still need dairy for healthy bones. Yeah. I had a friend who just went to the doctor and the doctor asked if she was getting enough milk for a calcium and it was like, really? There are other things. Broccoli has so much calcium, it, spinach... If you're, yeah, right? yeah, I know. It's strange. So no, mm. I'm not anti-pharma because, well, hell, if I hadn't been on all that medication, keeping me, you know, half alive, I wouldn't have been able to come to the conclusion that diet would help. Like the right. Adderall was a godsend for keeping me awake. That being said, if I, you know, if diet had been maybe more looked into originally, I wouldn't have to had to go on the medication. Right. But no, I'm not antidepressant anti-antidepressant anti-antidepressant they did help you they did help me a lot but um i i am annoyed that you get laughed at when you mention nutrition at a doctor's office like yeah you could at least look into that a little bit more right there was um i did a video i'll upload it i'm not sure when but on the agenda it was there was a segment called last week the science of antidepressants and 80 percent of on ontario 80 percent of uh, prescriptions for antidepressants go through a family doctor, mm-hmm. not even a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like you'd have no time to talk to your family doctor. You have like 15 minutes. They want to do something when someone comes in with distress. Um, they automatically, you know, they have to help. Like here's a here's a script. This could make you feel better. It's it is difficult to ask the questions and analyze diet and give like kind of go deeper into that. Yeah, and people I... need to take responsibility if if they're able. 
to look into different things like this. Or people need to be told that it's an option. Like, right. I, I always assumed, I had people come up to me when I was depressed and say, well, have you looked at diet? And it was just like, you know, fuck you. Like, yeah. what do you think I do? Sit around eating candy? And that's <laughs> causing my horrible depression? Or, like, something I'm doing wrong is causing my mental health. That's, a, you get, I mean, you get a lot of, you get a lot of that when you're depressed. Like, maybe you don't exercise enough. Yeah. And it's like, thanks. Yeah, it's me. And that's what's causing my problems. Right. So I think if we somehow could switch the conversation from diet being something that you're doing wrong to, you know, some foods maybe causing a depressive reaction, like, that's a different thing. Hmm. Like, if I eat a tiny bit, if I cheat, you know, once, once a week, my depression doesn't go away. Right. But that would, so it's not really something you're doing wrong. It's just people just don't know. I love that. Yeah. It's not putting the blame on the person suffering saying you're no, eating I mean, the you're wrong already, things. But yeah, I hate that. You're yeah. already suffering. You, you go to somebody that happened to all the time at the doctors, you go to someone for help and you go like, these are my horrible symptoms. And they go, Oh, here are three things you're doing wrong. Right, <laughs> right. Like, Thanks. That's why I came here. Oh my god. Probably gosh. sleeping too much. That's right. Eating the wrong foods and not exercising. And if I turned those around, things would be fine. Yep, completely fixed. That's yeah. why the mental health and mental illness is so complex. Um, and you're not saying that a meat only diet, if everyone did this, depression cured. Like this is a full cure. Or are you saying that? Like I. <laughs> I don't know. Or are you just advocating, hey, experiment. Try yeah, some experiment. elimination. Like, experiment. Get rid of dairy, gluten. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you know, between me and you, if I were to, to try this meat only. Solidly for a month? Yeah. I think you'd see insane benefits. Insane benefits. And I can, like, there's a website called meatheals.com. Okay. And there are anecdotal reports of people going on the carnivore diet carnivore zero carb diet and there are crazy stories on there and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reports and there are and normally i wouldn't believe something like that because it's so strange but i've experienced it and my dad has experienced it like his anxiety is gone and i couldn't get it under control with just eliminating well my elimination diet which was very strict yeah and he never cheated right um and he's not, he's not exercising. Like, it's not something else. It's not like some stressor in his life just lifted. It's the diet. Right. So, it's not know, like you it's weren't, me- you, it's not like you weren't meditating. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, yeah. this is pure diet. Yeah. So, um, the last part before a battery dies, which is such a damn shame. Um, any um, other things that you do, other diet was like, a huge piece obviously the biggest but anything else you do that that keeps your mind sharp that keeps you mentally well um, that you would kind of want to want to tell people here well so now I would say okay yeah I guess so like no not really most like it's it's diet mm-hmm. but if I do end up reacting to something using an infrared sauna really helps me feel better exercising does give me a boost so if I do have a reaction, I'll exercise. I'll make sure I'll exercise every day because it gives me a boost or multiple times a day. Uh, the infrared sauna helps. Um, what I used to do before when my depression was really awful when I was in university is write. Mm. And that helped a lot because then, you know, you get those flares of like, I used to get them anyway, extreme anger where you want to like punch something. And you, I could write until that had calmed down. Mm. So that's what I would use. But honestly, I'm in like really good shape now so i don't i don't use much awesome and for the the last comment for those watching many um on the channel i love you all um many have diagnoses many struggle with depression and anxiety and haven't told anyone um yeah and and you come on uh with your dad on tvo years ago and then just two years ago and are really open about how you struggled with depression and and these physical illnesses as well. Um, why did you do it? Why why was it you know not easy for you? But any advice to people who are having trouble opening up about these things and not seeking seeking help? Um, I think it was harder. 
for dad to tell people than it was for me because I'd been telling people for almost my whole life. Um, dad had a harder time. I think if if there wasn't so much, I guess stigma is the right word, or blaming the person who's depressed for being depressed, um, that would be easier. But I guess I would say you're not you're not doing anything wrong, right? You're extremely unfortunate that this has happened to you, but it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's bad enough to suffer from a mental illness than to also think this is my fault somehow. So about getting help, like, yeah, talk to people. Yeah. It, it helps. And try not to talk to the people that are going to tell you. <laughs> right. You need to... You're just lazy, and that's why yeah, you're depressed. Yeah, they, they have all the answers, some people. Yeah. yeah. And I guess that's part of uh, depression to expression, too. It's like expressing yourself in positive and healthy ways, but there is not a lot of the time one fix all for a lot of people. Like some people, writing doesn't do anything for them, right? Exercise Whereas, didn't do anything for me. Right? See, like, there you go. I tried it. It helps now I can get a boost from it, but I'm not like, I'm not like I was yeah it didn't help at all exactly so you've been telling people that you struggle with depression since a very early age but was that was that honesty and openness was that how you were raised like how did that come more naturally to you because some people it's all internal and they won't tell a soul was that kind of what your parents taught you to seek help or to be open with your thinking um how did I get there? Like when I was first diagnosed with arthritis, so that was grade two, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't want anybody to know. And then in grade seven, I stopped caring for some reason about the arthritis, about the depression. And I was just like, I don't know what happened. I guess I just re- decided, you know, it wasn't my fault. And, and I guess I had told enough people slowly and they hadn't cared that I was like, oh, people generally speaking, and I've had some bad experiences, but generally speaking, don't care. Or they'll say, you know, you'll say, you know, I have, I have this and they'll go, oh, you know, my so-and-so has whatever. So maybe I'm just lucky and didn't get a whole bunch of bad feedback. Maybe it's that. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I, I mean, it's not like I opened up to someone and they immediately said, this is your fault. Here are all the things you're doing wrong. And then I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to tell anyone else about this right. anymore. Right. Um, so maybe luck. Yeah. To know. have that, that first bit of experience and people not caring as much as you thought they would in a good way. Yeah. 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 So I would say probably that. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not sure. I just didn't care. I didn't care. And if people did give me hell, it's just like, fuck you. Um, I generally write, well, I write about what's going on. So for the last, I started when I was on this elimination diet. So I had recipes for you know, that elimination diet I was on, collard greens, you know, broccoli, just different ways to make food that way. So it's a lot different now that I'm just eating meat. And the better I feel and the more testimonies I get from people saying, you know, I cut out all the rest of the vegetables and now I feel better. I don't really know what to do because, well, I don't know. It's hard for me not to tell people to give it a try because it made me feel so much better. Yeah. But it's just so out there. Like, you get flack from going gluten free. You get a hell of a lot more flack from being like, "Don't eat vegetables." <laughs> mm, yeah. So, yeah. anyway, so the blog has that. Um, it has testimonies on there from other people who've had benefits from cutting certain things out of their diet. So there are more and more people who've just gone to meet, writing their experience down. Awesome. Um, yeah, and it has updates about my family. Dad's on there sometime. Yeah. Well, he's everywhere though. He's everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, if any of you came to see um, uh, Dr. Peterson, just YouTube his name and you can probably find a, find a lot stuff. of videos. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Michaela, thanks so much. And everyone, uh, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to Depression to Expression and look at the links below to see more of Michaela. Boom. Cool. Thanks. Well, thanks for having me. That was really interesting. I'm so glad I didn't look at the latest version of the diet. <laughs> I know. Because that is shocking.